Good afternoon all. I need to charge some supercapacitors and uh, they're these. They're 2.5 volt, 700 farad and they're all going to be connected in series which will give me ooh, 5, 10, 15 volts and 700 farads divided by 6, whatever that is, a bit over 100 farads. Um, for use in my supercapacitor powered Bluetooth speaker project. Uh, here's the speaker and the amplifier. Now this project has been stalled for a while because uh, only six of the eight capacitors turned up. I bought uh, two from another seller and they didn't turn up and I started a, a case on eBay and then suddenly my money was refunded instantly so they're not coming. Uh, the other speaker wasn't supplied. I ordered two. I only got one. The seller said they'd send on the second one and it never turned up so it's all been a bit on hold but uh, in anticipation of some new bits arriving I'm kind of thinking to myself how am I gonna charge these because when I've built the Bluetooth uh, supercapacitor powered speaker I'm gonna need some means to charge it up from the mains so what mains charger am I gonna use to charge these capacitors well, one possibility which I dug out of my storage unit is this. It's um, an AC adapter which says output is 12 volts at 1 amp, input 240 volts, 50 hertz. Now this is really heavy, so I suspect that there's a transformer in here, a bridge rectifier, and possibly, probably, a smoothing capacitor. Now this was um, from, I think it was a wireless access point, one of the old... 802.11b units I think, uh, but it's quite chunky, one amp. What I suspect this will put out is actually quite a lot more than 12 volts off load and then when it's loaded up to this sort of current the voltage will sink down to about 12 volts. Could I use this to charge the supercapacitors? So I've plugged this thing into the mains, let's now check uh, the output it's center positive and we're getting yeah 16.8 volts off load let's check what it's like on load I've got a bulb here which is sort of wired in series with this uh, wire here but with a little shorting plug on the end that will just light up so that's lit up now I just want to check the voltage that's across there and the voltage across there, I can just about get my probes on. Yes, well it's sunk down substantially below 12 volts. It's actually at 10 and a half. Now 12 volts, 21 watts is sort of approaching two amps. Yeah, it's probably overloading this thing a little bit. And as a result, the voltage has dropped. Now, what does this mean? Um, 115 degrees C with a symbol that looks, well, a little bit like a fuse. So does it mean that there's some sort of temperature cutout on this? And uh, that's an issue when I start charging these supercapacitors because when they're completely discharged, they're going to appear almost as a dead short with no uh, voltage step. So this thing, the only protection it looks like it's got against powering a dead short where its output is going to be near zero volts is that it will just get hot and trigger that and that's not really ideal is it? So just so I can do an actual practical experiment I'm just switching to this other supercapacitor bank uh, 2.7 volts 500 farads each of these mainly because it's got this plug already attached onto it there's a fuse there just to protect it in case of overcurrent so I can or I could plug that directly into there but then that would put these which are completely discharged directly across this power supply imposing that sort of dead short and I don't know how this thing would respond then maybe another way around this if I take this bulb which we know can sit on here yes it's a little bit overloaded because this is going to be taking I don't know one and a half amps perhaps near two amps whatever um, 21 divided by 12 is um, if I put that on there that power supply is reasonably happy um, so as I say this is wired so that the lamp is sort of in series you can see that loop there with the plug and the socket so I can take that little shorting link off uh, plug that socket 
into the power supply and plug this plug into the supercapacitors. Let's see what it does. Right, let's plug it in. I'm pretty sure these uh, supercapacitors are virtually completely flat. Plug that in. And of course what happens is the lamp comes on because the voltage across the capacitors is near zero. Now as the voltage on these rises up, the potential difference between whatever's coming out of here and whatever's in these is across the bulb. So that will start to drop. We should be watching that really. And after some difficulty attaching my meter probes to the bulb, we can see that the bulb voltage, they're the wrong way around, but it doesn't really matter, is uh, 5 volts approximately and falling. So the voltage across that bulb will fall. As that filament cools down, of course, its resistance will get lower, so there'll be a better path for current to flow in the supercapacitors. And we're not really overstressing this thing uh, because it has this resistive load. The resistance will change slightly as the temperature changes, but there's a resistive load between the power supply and the capacitors. So, yeah, that works as a setup to charge the supercapacitors. It's just a bit wasteful because we're losing power in the bulb really throughout most of the charging phase, only when this thing uh, goes completely out are we no longer losing power in this charging setup. And uh, if we look at the voltage across the supercapacitor bank, I've now put my probes either side of that, um, it's got to about 8.5 volts, so that's about halfway to the 16.2 nominal voltage that this thing will rise up to. Now this thing was, what was it, 16 point something? So once this lamp goes out, that's still quite warm, um, then we should have a voltage coming out of this, which could take this almost all the way to full charge. So it potentially could work. But it is going very slowly. This has slowed right down that filament. Is that still on? Yeah, it's still on. Uh, this is just approaching 10 volts. This is going to take an age to get this capacitor bank up to 16 volts using this one amp power supply. So. Is there anything else with a bit more oomph uh, which I can use to charge these up a little bit more quickly? So I just want to discharge these capacitors a bit while I think about another power supply option. So I've just made up a little shorting male 2.1 plug there for the other end of this. Plug that in. The lamp will light and oh, don't really want that to short out. Uh, the capacitor bank will now discharge and I'm looking for another power supply. And I found this, it's a 90 watt laptop power supply and it's got switchable voltages, uh, 12, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20. So I should be able to tune this to provide a voltage which will bring this capacitor bank up to about 16 or 17 volts. Maybe that will require switching this to 18 volts, uh, particularly if I'm going to put a diode between this power supply and the capacitor bank, so uh, let's get this out of its box. Well, actually, before I do that, let's take a look at this. Um, output power max 90 watts. It's got a couple of uh, one amp USBs, but that's pretty useless. We've got those voltage ranges, which are switchable on a little slide switch. Output current is 4.5 amps at any of the voltages between 12 and 20, 3.75 amps at 24. Well, that doesn't matter because we're not going to be using 24 volts. So we've got four and a half amps here. Now that's going to charge this capacitor bank much more quickly. It's got a center positive uh, connector. Right, this should do. Right, so I've plugged this thing in. Um, the health check light hasn't come on. I think that's good. This I've set using this uh, slide switch, multiple position slide switch to 18 volts. Now this can provide up to uh, four and a half amps. However, it's going to be going through this lamp. So um, even when this is fully discharged, I'm not going to connect this directly to the capacitors. I'm going to go through that lamp. That lamp will only take up to about 2 amps. Let's connect it in and see what happens. Right, so I want to take uh, this shorting plug off there. Now I can connect the power supply with its 18 volts into there. The lamp comes on really bright because the uh, capacitor bank is now down to 4 volts. But because we've got more current, that's going to start rising up 
more quickly than the other one or is it? Probably is because this thing's going to maintain its 18 volt output um, irrespective of the load on it, particularly at this sort of load. The other one had dropped down to 10 volts. This is going to be still at 18. So that's now climbing up. Let's see if we can take this high enough to get these uh, protection circuits coming on. Now this power supply also says the short circuit protection, yes. Overload protection, yes. But I don't really want to connect the power supply directly to the capacitors because it's going to pull this regulated 18 volts right down to 7 volts. This thing's going to start complaining. Probably the short circuit or the overload protection will kick in and it might switch in and out. It's just not going to be a very elegant way of, do it, of doing it. So I'm just soaking up uh, the excess voltage in this lamp. The capacitor banks up to 7.7 .7 now. The question is though, in the finished uh, supercapacitor powered Bluetooth speaker, do we want a big light bulb on the top which uh, lights up brightly while you're charging it? It's a fairly obvious giveaway that this is consuming large amounts of the energy coming from the mains power pack. It's not very mm, eco-friendly, is it? Now the brightness of this lamp is uh, becoming less and less. It's sort of about mid brightness now. So it's fairly obvious that the current flowing through this circuit is reducing and as a result the uh, charge rate, the speed at which it's charging, is slowing down. So again this isn't really ideal. What I really want here is some sort of constant current charging which will bring these things up to almost exactly what they need to be, about sort of 16 and a half volts if I've got a series diode in here and then the current just falls away very quickly at the end and that will charge these in the minimum time. And I seem to remember that that fancy supercapacitor power Bluetooth speaker that's on Kickstarter or one of those um, funding websites claimed a very fast charge, something like five minutes. So yeah, this lamp's getting really quite dim now. It's not going to be on for much longer, but this is just going so slowly now because it's not constant current. The current depends on uh, how much voltage differential there is across this resistive load. This resistance will go down a bit when it cools down, but that's not going to make a huge difference. So I think it's not going to work with this sort of fixed... Oh, these lights are starting to come on. That's good. So we're getting to uh, full temperature. And of course now, because the current flowing in here is quite low, I'm sure that these protection circuits are going to be able to keep the capacitor voltages to a safe level but I don't think this is the solution. I think we have to go back to uh, a proper constant current and uh, constant voltage power supply unit where I can set the current to set the charge rate, set the voltage to set the maximum voltage that these things will get up to. The point here is that this power supply wants to put a potential difference of 18 volts across its output and up to about four and a half amps, it's really not going to want that voltage to drop down at all. So this is not a power supply which can be regulated. Well, it's voltage regulated, but it wants to hold that voltage. Um, a current and voltage regulated power supply, if the current goes too high, it's perfectly willing to drop its voltage in order to keep the, con the current constant. This one isn't interested in that. And uh, now that these protection circuits are coming on, I've got five of them on now, the voltage across the capacitor bank is actually falling uh, because these things are discharging a lot of the uh, charge that's in those capacitors. So a lot of the current, well, more than the current coming in, we've got current going out into these discharge circuits. So the voltage on the capacitor bank is actually falling. So I'm going to leave this running for a bit. I want to see all of these protection circuits come on. I think I've seen them all bar this second one, so I'll wait till that one comes on. Then I'll know that this capacitor is up to voltage. Uh, all the others have reached maximum voltage and are have been discharged to get them back down to a safe voltage. But until this one comes on, uh, this won't have reached the maximum voltage that this bank can actually hold. Right, so once again we've got one capacitor that's kind of uh, way behind the others by the look of it. All five bar this second one have come on. I've not seen that one light yet so I'm just gonna have to wait 
until this one lights and then I know these are all reasonably well balanced. There is one advantage with this setup though, by using a fixed voltage power supply and a resistive load, when this capacitor bank gets near its maximum voltage the current is very low and that kind of means that these protection circuits really are guaranteed to prevent over voltage on the capacitors. If I have a constant current uh, power supply which will keep, I don't know, say let's say two amps running into this thing and we've got one of these rogue capacitors that's uh, at a much lower voltage than all the others, then at that current the other five capacitors could go over voltage because there'd be enough current coming in, a fixed two amps, that these um, discharge circuits actually wouldn't be able to uh, discharge all of that two amps so there'd still be current flowing in to the capacitor so I'm going to have to watch that certainly this setup I mean it's not elegant it's wasteful um, but it does mean that these capacitors can protect themselves so why is this second capacitor here taking so long it still hasn't lit up its protection circuit why is it taking so long to get up to voltage is it because it's got a much higher capacitance than the other capacitors I suspect that's not it I suspect it's actually got a lower capacitance and it fully discharged before any of the others did and quite possibly it went substantially negative in voltage which is um, far from being a good thing but um, possibly then when it's sitting there with a negative voltage across it it takes a long time for it to sort of flip round to positive and charge up but that still hasn't come on yet that one and all the time that this rogue capacitor is coming up to full voltage, these other capacitors have been switching on, switching off, switching on, switching off. So, and, and during that process, the overall voltage of the whole bank has been steadily coming up and coming up. Right, that one has finally come on now, so I'm satisfied that all six capacitors are now going through their uh, switching on and switching off the protection circuit cycle. So that I class as having them all balanced. But this is a substantially higher voltage, 16.6, than the voltage when these five capacitors started switching on and off. Of course, now I've got the problem that I'm in danger of um, all these capacitors going over voltage. Actually, no, I'm probably not because there's a very low current flowing through there, isn't there? But if this was a constant current power supply, then in the early stages of the, the five capacitors cycling themselves they'd be receiving more current than they could perhaps cope with so there are issues here and I'm not quite sure yet how to resolve this. I mean this is almost warrants having an intelligent charger which has a microprocessor a microcontroller which charges the capacitors at a high current initially say four or five amps to really get them all up quickly when it sees the first lights come on I don't know how that would be organized maybe even some sort of opto isolator arrangement it would then wind the current right down to then bring the last of the capacitors the rogue ones the ones that are very slow to reach their final voltage up at a much lower current but I didn't really want that sort of level of intelligence in what is really just a basic charger circuit uh, right so that's really as far as I've got with this um, I will perhaps in another part put on the constant current uh, power supply, but uh, for the moment, cheerio.